Good morning, guys. So now that we have seen each of these smaller rules, we're going to use them in combination with each other. And in order to do this, you are going to have to watch very carefully what signs you have, whether you're dealing with a coefficient or an exponent, because remember the rules only apply to those exponents, and you're also going to have to remember a few rules that we have with fractions. So let's start out with that fraction rule. Don't forget that when you multiply fractions, you are going to be multiplying across the top and across the bottom. So if I want to solve this first equation here, what I can do is, since there is multiplication, I can replace this with multiplication across the top and across the bottom. And so it's just one very long fraction. Now, what I'm going to do next is going to be an easy step, but it's essential, okay? So don't forget to do this. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to organize. Organization is what makes our lives easier, and I'm not just talking about math here, all right? Anytime you can organize, you are going to save yourself a lot of time in the long run. So in order to organize, I'm going to remember that I can multiply numbers in any order that I want. So if I look across the top and all I have are multiplication and those powers, well, that means I can rearrange them. And I'm going to arrange them this way. I'm going to start by listing my coefficients. And coefficients, remember, are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, anything like this, my 2 and 9, that are being multiplied. They're not powers, they're just normal numbers. So 2 times 9 can get moved to the front. And next, I'm going to group my similar variables to each other. And I like to do this in alphabetical order, but you can do this however you want. I'm going to leave a little bit of space, too. And I'm going to use a different color pen because this is going to make it a little bit easier to notice patterns. So here I have x squared, and I have just an x. Last but not least, I've taken care of my x's. I've taken care of my 2 and 9. The last thing that I need to do is list those y's. So notice I'm not solving anything, just organizing. So this is y and y squared. And by the way, by crossing them out as you go, you can make sure that you don't lose any numbers or variables by accident. Now my next step is to organize the bottom, and I'm going to do that in the same way. I'm going to look for coefficients. If I have any, I'll put them towards the front. And I do. I have the coefficient 3. Next, I'm going to look for any x's, and I'm going to layer them below the x's up here. And I do. I have 1, and that's just x, to the first power, or no power listed. And last but not least, I have my y to the fourth, which I can list over here. Okay, so you might already be able to tell what I'm doing here. If you look at it this way, you can actually divide and multiply these sorts of things. We can use our rules with division and multiplication, and we can apply them to part of the fraction at a time, because this could be split up into three separate fractions, right? 2 times 9 over 3, x squared times x over x, and y times y squared over y to the fourth. So I'm going to simplify these. I'm going to start with my normal numbers. Now remember, these do not follow the rules of exponents. This is actual multiplication, not addition. And this is actual division, not subtraction. So I know that 2 times 9 is 18. And so I'm left with 18 over 3. And you can do a quick check. Can you simplify 18 over 3 without reducing this to a decimal answer? Well, yeah, because 18 over 3 is the same as 6 or 6 over 1. So I'm just going to write a 6 along the top of my fraction. Now I can look at my x's, and I'm going to simplify these. Well, I can do this one of two ways. I can just look at it and say, well, if I have x squared times x, and then I divide by x, these two cancel out because I'm undoing a multiplication. They're raised to the same power, and they just cancel out, which leaves me with just an x squared on top. If you don't notice that, though, you can also say, well, this is x squared times x to the first, which is the same as x to the third over x. And I'm just going to put a 1 with every variable that doesn't have an exponent there, just so it's easy to see. And we know that when we're dividing variables with the same, or when we're dividing powers with the same base, I can just subtract. So I get x to the third minus 1, which is x squared. And last but not least, I end up with this one, where I have y times y squared over y to the fourth. Well, I'm going to combine what's on top first 
to get y to the first times y squared, which is y to the third, and my y to the fourth is in the bottom. Now I know that then I can subtract these two, and y to the three minus four is equal to y to the negative one. So what I'm left with is y to the negative one, and that is currently up in the top, because whatever you subtract will end up up in the top. But this negative sends it down to the bottom, so I end up with y to the first, or just y, down in the bottom of my fraction. And that leaves me with the final answer of 6 times x squared over y to the first, and I would be done. So as you can see, the key to these is staying organized and working piece at a time. And we're going to do that with the next one as well. Let's just move this on down so we can see number 2 here. Now with this one, what we're going to have to do is before I can do that line across to extend my fraction, I need to get rid of the parentheses. And getting rid of parentheses is only possible if I can like distribute this power. And remember, it's totally okay to distribute power if you have multiplication or division. All you need to do is multiply it times the power that's already there. And it will actually do the same with whatever number's in the bottom here. So that means that when I distribute this, I'm getting x squared times negative 3 over y to the 1 times negative 3. Well, that is going to give me an answer of, well, 2 times negative 3 is equal to a negative 6. So I have x to the negative 6. And then on the bottom, y times to the 1 times negative 3 is just y to the negative 3. Don't forget that because we are dealing with exponent rules, the negatives send the y to the top, and they're going to send the x to the bottom since both of them are negative, both of them are moving. And that leaves us with x to the 6 over y, or I'm sorry, y to the 3rd over x to the 6. So those two things have switched places. Now I've done all of this work, but I actually haven't finished the problem. Because don't forget, this whole time this guy's still hanging out, and we still have x over y to the negative 1. That's okay though. Because that means that now, now that I have this thing distributed, I can get rid of the parentheses around it, and I can reorganize and restructure everything. And I am going to get rid of the parentheses around it. And I'm going to rewrite this, that all of my x's are in the front, and I'm going to use purple again for x here. Um, so along the top I've got x times, and let's just use blue, light blue for y x times y to the third on the top of my fraction. And here I'm just going to flip-flop these two numbers because I really would like my x before I have my y. So those two are by each other. And that means I'm going to write my x to the six here. And my y right now is to a negative one. Okay, so I have a few options. And before I even address them, I'm just going to add a 1 to this first x, because remember, if it's missing something, it's x to the first power. So I have a few options. I can move this y up to the top of my fraction and get a y to the third times y to the first up on the top, and that is totally fine. I can also just subtract these as is, y to the third minus a negative 1, which gives me a y to the fourth. You'll notice that both methods are going to give me the same answer, and that's because these rules do overlap. They have a lot of the same ideas in them. For the sake of this, I'm just going to use subtraction. So looking at this portion, just the y's, which I can do because there's multiplication around it, y to the third minus a negative one is y to the third plus one, or y to the fourth. Over here, I've got x to the first minus 6, which is going to give me x to the negative fifth. Now, technically, I've simplified it, but remember, we don't like negative exponents. So I'm going to move this x to the other part of the fraction so that I can get rid of my negative. So that leaves me with a final answer of y to the fourth over x to the fifth. Let's look at one final example. For this one, 
I don't have any parentheses, so I know I can get started. But something that throws some people off is the fact that this x is not written as a fraction. So how on earth can I multiply it? Well, don't forget that this is actually a fraction. This fraction could be written as x to the fourth over one. And if I write that out in the way that I'm used to seeing it, so that my fractions look like they're on an even level, I have y to the negative two over x squared times x to the fourth over one. So notice that I haven't actually done anything to solve it. What I've done is I've made it look like problems I've done before. And that can help me figure out my solution because I know how to solve these sorts of problems. So don't be afraid to rewrite things if you're starting to get stuck. So here, I can put multiplication between both of these. And that means that at this point, I'm all set to organize. Remember that personally, I like doing my x's first. So I'm gonna write x to the fourth. And over here, my y to the second. And don't lose that negative there, that is a negative second. On the bottom, I've got a one and I've got an x squared. Now this one doesn't actually do anything because this one is a coefficient that just disappears. One times x squared is just x squared. So I'm actually just gonna write x squared and skip the one. Okay, so let's get rid of our negative because we don't really like negatives. I'm gonna do that by taking this and moving it to the bottom of my fraction. So now I have y to the second along the bottom and I've moved it from the top. Here, what I end up with is for my y, x to the fourth over x squared. So that's gonna be x to the four minus two or x squared. And that's in the top of the fraction because it's a positive number. And my y has no simplification, it's just stuck in the bottom. At this point, I can place it under the x because I have nothing else to simplify. And my final answer is x squared, y squared. Now keep in mind, you can check all of these answers quite easily. Pick a value for x and pick a value for y. Don't use zero or one because they do weird things when you square them. In other words, they don't really change. But pick numbers like two and three. Put them into this should give you the same value as if you put those same numbers into here. So if I picked x equals 2, y equals 3, I'd put 3 to the negative second over 2 squared times 2 to the fourth should give me the same answer as 2 squared over 3 squared. Go ahead and try that out if you don't believe me. Today all I want you to do are two problems. I want you to do this one right here which is 3 x y to the fourth over x to the third times y over x y to the third. And I also want you to do this problem, which is 5x over y to the third to the third. So just do those two, show your work, submit a picture, and call it a day for math. Hope you guys had a good one. I will see you soon.